Uh, I'll, um... It's gonna be the laugh cast. <laughs> <laughs> We're not recording, I hope. Oh, yes, we are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Only just. Only just. <laughs> Hey gang, welcome to episode 2 of Inkscape, your source for Inkscape news. Joining me today is Ryan. Hi Ryan. Hey there. Michelle. Hey Michelle. Hello. Uh, we've got um, Martin. Hi Martin. Hi there. And Mark. Hey there Mark. Hi. And Chris. Hi Chris. How's it going? So on the agenda today we've got the uh, past Hackfest news. Inkscape 1.0, we've got news about the bug game, Hello Tux merch and Scale 17 and also some news on the macOS build. So first up guys is the Hackfest news. We've had two Hackfests this year. Um, anybody like to fill us in on what's been going on with the Hackfests? Sure, for... I mean, we, we should we should probably start with the Hackfest in scale since that happened first in yeah. uh, Pas Pasadena, California, USA. Um, so there's a there's an event there called Scale. I think it's the 17th year it's been running. And we organized a Hackfest to coincide um, with that event. Uh, myself and Ryan, who are here, uh, were, were at that Hackfest. And um, it, was, it was only three days, I think. Uh, before the actual scale event itself. Yeah. Um, Ryan, can what did just, can, Let me just chime in. Um, yeah, I've heard people say, what is a Hackfest? Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, a Hackfest is um, an opportunity for a bunch of developers and contributors on Inkscape and really any project to get together and meet face-to-face -face and work through some of the multiple issues and needs um like human beings do face to face so it's a great opportunity for the project because um a lot of us have never met each other in person um and so it kind of helps build up those relationships it makes it easier when we're having disagreements online um <laughs> to maybe understand the tone that maybe somebody's not angry at us um that's not the only reason but it's a great perk <laughs> Um, people can find out that everything I say is untrue. Um, and, uh, it, it's a, those are the fringe benefits, but the real benefit is the, um, work gets done. So at this particular Hackfest, there were, um, several, uh, multiple developers there. Um, I was there, um, I'm not a programmer, so I was there doing filming and, um, working on a side project to kind of promote Inkscape. So, um, Martin, well, you were there as well. So, what were you involved with at the Hackfest? Um, so, primarily, we were just uh, we had to talk uh, about a couple of different things. One was about um, internal organization within the Inkscape project. We had a number of board mem members who were all there at the same time, so we could sit down and have a uh, rigorous discussion about where we want to take the Inkscape pro project um, in, at an administrative level. And uh, we were able to sort out, you know, what we want to spend our money on, um, where we think that we want to be able to um, engage more of the project's funds into helping with our administration bur burdens. Uh, this includes things like releases, but it also includes a lot of the sort of uh, overheads that we we incur that is not development. It's just sort of sorting out developers and making sure that everything else is running well. Um, I, I don't know if I can say uh, too much about the conclusions to that because they're still ongoing. Um, the other side of things was to look at the uh, Inkscape 1.0 release and which what were the, were the things that were blocking us from be, being able to make that release. Uh, we had developments that needed to happen for uh, the extensions, which I worked on, uh, but we also had things that uh, where we had to work on speed improvements, crashes, lots of crashes, 
and uh, dialogues. Uh, Tav was particularly, uh, Tav Mahong was particularly uh, invested into working on the on the um, dialogue problems and menu bar. Um, so there's there was a lot going on, and there there is a, a good uh, rundown of what the scale uh, Pasadena Hackfest uh, what we did this year. Um, and I believe Ryan, you did some interviews with everybody, right? Yeah, I uh, brought a camera kit, um, set up with some lighting in uh, the area space that we were doing our work, and uh, interviewed some of a couple of the founders of the project, a few of the contributors. Um, the intention is, it, you know, the secret about video editing is that capturing the video is the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> Um, turning that into something that people want to watch is a lot more work. So that's ongoing. But the intention is eventually that we'll expose to the world a little bit more what the motivations are behind this project and why it exists and um, what they can do to contribute and who it's for. Um, I think we the, the problem when you're this close to a project is that you just assume everyone knows what you know. And um, I, I am amazed constantly how surprised people are that there is such a thing as a project that's just, or a software application that's just created by volunteers. And to yeah. us, that's, self, that's so obvious, but to a lot of people, they have never even heard of that. So we want to get that message out. Yeah, so for the, the, the first thing I, I should actually add to that is that the, the Hackfest was only possible because of the, uh, the kind donations that uh, our users do give to us over time, especially when, when we ask them specifically to that we're going to do a Hackfest because, you know, it does cost money for us to fly people to a specific place to, for hotels and things. And I, I believe this Californian Hackfest was actually pretty pricey uh, for the hotels because there's not, you know, it's a very packed in place there. Um, so thank, I, I want to give out my my thanks for all of the donations that we get in. Um, you know, it, 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 this is one of the reasons why I'm I'm not too bothered when I get a lot of emails as the webmaster for Inkscape from users who need help uh, or they make assumptions that we are a business, that we are you know some for profit business, and their attitude is a little forceful. And so I'm, I'm like, okay, like I understand you're mistaken about what kind of entity you're you're uh, asking. Uh, questions of here, but I'm going to be trying try and be nice, redirect you where I can, and you know fill in the gaps so that you understand that we are a, a group of volunteers. No, none of us have to be here, but we want to be. Yeah, I think it's important to note that none of you get paid to attend Hackfest. You all take off time from your own jobs. You have to take holiday time. You have to you know go away from your families. They have to do without you, and you do this because. Of your love of Inkscape, and I yeah. think that's what people don't realize sometimes. That you know, people mistakenly think that this is a big organization. There's lots of money flying around. People get paid to code, and um, it's not. It's just. I mean, everyone here today, we're all volunteers. You know, we're just doing this because we're interested and we want to give back to the project. And um, so, if there's anyone out there that wants to get involved. They should get involved, you know, and come on board. Um, also, also, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> takes over right. your life. But Ryan, yeah, not, you not you um you instigated the the vectors team, um, about eighteen months ago. Well, I was at the right place at the right time. Yeah, you, you <laughs> so do I, yourself I a disservice. Yeah, but um, but you I took the lead. Up. You took the lead. Um. Yeah. Uh, so, I, so just briefly explain to us what is the vectors team? Because people are hearing vectors, but don't necessarily know what it is, why it's there, how they can get involved. So, just from your perspective as the lead, tell us what vectors is and, and why people should know about it. Well, the way I look at it, um, we have these generous contributions of people like Mark, Martin other developers who are creating the software that we all benefit from. And um, the vectors exist really to make sure that those sacrifices that are being made by the developers and everyone else working on the project are actually um, bearing fruits in as many people's lives as possible. 
So in a, in a sense, is I, I don't like to call it the marketing team. I think we were floating that idea around in the beginning. Mm -hmm. We're using a lot of the same tools as marketing, but Inkscape's not a commercial product. We're not making money off of it. Um, it's really more of an outreach promotion team. And, um, and really anything else, I think Vectors in a lot of ways has become a place for people to contribute um, that don't know really where else they can contribute. They love, Ink love Inkscape, they want to give back. Um, they want to give back in their time and their talent. Um, and we say, hey, show up and let's figure out what you can do. Um, we're helping with social media posts. Um, we're writing, Michelle's writing a bunch of awesome articles. Um, we're doing just miscellaneous things, um, whether you're a designer or you're just a passionate about Inkscape, um, we'd love your help. Now, that being said, um, don't, don't get the wrong impression if we're not real good at onboarding you. <laughs> we're still working on that process. We've been doing this two years, I think. Yeah, coming up to two years, <laughs> um, yeah. And we're still figuring it out. So, so, so are you saying that, that you're... Be persistent. Are you, are you, are you saying that you're, you're trying to recruit an onboarding spe specialist? <laughs> if you are a specialist at onboarding or, or willing to learn how to do that, <laughs> um, none of us are necessarily experts. Um, I've never contributed to a free software project. So no. just come, be passionate, care, be patient. Um, but really, if you love Inkscape and you want to figure out how we can get it in the hands of more people around the world, then that's where, what Vectors is for. One thing to, uh, to help, actually, the, we have some new tools at our dis at disposal. Um, also, thanks to Ryan and, and uh, efforts from the team, uh, the, uh, the Inkscape uh, chat rooms that we have now, we have a dedicated one for uh, the Vectors. So if you're curious about um, what you can do to, uh, to contribute to the project, just come and have a chat with us. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put you to work. It's not a problem. <laughs> Well, and, yeah. and I'd say, you know, Michelle, can you tell us, you, you kind of came and were passionate, but it took a while before you really found that perfect fit. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so eventually I, um, I found Vectors and uh, through Twitter, Ryan, you put out a tweet saying there was a meeting online and that you didn't need to be a programmer. So I clicked on landed in a meeting in March 2018 and the rest is history so I joined up and I was very excited and I thought I would observe for a while and figure out what was going on it took me a little bit of time to sort of get a sense of working like you said Ryan this is the first time I'm working on an open source project uh, so it's really interesting to sort of understand what open source is how it works um, you know the different there's a bit of a different value set uh, as well, which is exciting. It's people from around the world, people who's for you know, English as a second or third language. So you're trying to kind of understand all of those things at the same time, um, humor, uh, frustration, all that, all that great stuff. And so it took me a while to kind of take a look, but I did have people who reached out to me right away. I connected with Bryn, with um, Moini, with um, Hela. So different people reached out and said hello. So I felt like I, and Ryan, you as well. So I had different people who, um, whom I met. And then as I connected to different platforms, uh, sort of started seeing what could be done. I think my my piece of advice would be to come in, take a look, and then suggest what you would like to do. Uh, and somebody's probably going to take you up on it. Um, whereas I was used to sort of waiting to see what somebody would maybe suggest. And in the end, I think the, the first news article I wrote was in November 2018, I was attending a, a board meeting. And there was a need to write a, a press release for uh, the mathematical L, I'm going to forget the name of it. Um, that's it. I didn't even know what it was. And I was like, I can write a news thing if somebody gives me some comments. So I interviewed uh, Bryce and then put it together and people kind of tweaked the language to make it understandable code wise what, what we were trying to achieve. But I realized then that uh, those were the skills I could I could bring to the to the table 
So that's how it happened for me. And, and uh, it, that is just, I, Michelle's story is really, I think, an example of what's amazing about open source is we've never met. Um, she showed up and she was just enthusiastic and willing to contribute her talent. And um, we just need that. And you don't have to, and I'll put this out here, we are all English speakers, um, you know, for better, or for worse. We have a couple who, who um, English isn't their first language, um, but you, that's not even a requirement. If you can speak enough English to come and say, hey, I know a community in Brazil that needs some help, come and help us figure out how to uh, get that community involved. So we don't, we're trying not to be ex exclusive of anyone. Um, only requirement is that you love Inkscape and you're willing to work with us to figure out how you can help it. Yeah, yeah I think the, the, the only requirement we have really is that there's a, a code of con con conduct um, which is a, the bare minimum, really, that you have to be able to be nice to other people. Yeah, be um, nice. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and, and work out when we have issues. Yeah. And we don't always agree either. We're not always, like, super, you know, everybody has their bad days. Um, and I think a, an essential part of that is, is just to be forgiving as well. Like, if, if somebody is clearly having a bad day, you know, just kind of leave it alone. Come back to it. Or um, you know, a PM them later and just say, "Hey, you know, uh, sorry, things got kind of out of hand. I didn't mean to, you know." Or it's um, taking like a, or kind of a, or a personal a responsibility for uh, your part of the conversation as well. Um, and it's it's actually something that nobody is really good at naturally. Like it took me quite a while, um, and the Inkscape project helped me quite a lot uh, because. Uh, you have a lot of uh, very patient people who uh, deal with, um, you know, user complaints and other things like that. You know, how do we uh, take the frustration and get uh, the useful information out of that, and also um, make them feel like they're heard, uh, make them feel like uh, we're working on it, um, and uh, we are. You know, <laughs> so uh, we uh, and um, maybe just as imp or as uh, importantly, if they're part of the community, how do we help them become um, kind of a more friendly part, you know, uh, or, or at least a feel the more connection you feel with a community, the less likely you are to be angry and, and um, uh, kind of um, jump to conclusions about things. And these are all things that, that uh, start and, and uh, perpetuate arguments. Um, so we're really not out to uh, beat anybody over the head with a code of conduct. It's mainly just, you know, come and, and be part of our community, come and be friendly, come in and I meet people and respect our differences between us and and everything goes fine right um and uh, nobody's perfect so. except for tim except oh. for tim that's, that's true <laughs> it's true it's true <laughs> right before i start blushing too much um mark can i bring you in now um because you're heavily involved in the um 1.0 alpha um yeah can you can you explain to us a little bit about what's going on with that? Well, we had a second hackfest recently, so it was uh, just before the Libre Graphics meeting, which is an uh, annual convention on uh, Libre Graphics projects like uh, GIMP, like uh, Krita, like Scribus, and many others. But these ones are the most known ones. And the, this time we also had the Blender people. Um, so just before this event, um, we met uh, between a few mostly European um, developers of Inkscape, and uh, we also invited. Uh, well, we also had uh, game people with us, and also um, Bode, which is the main developer from Krita. So mostly we worked on uh, the, well, the upcoming 1.0 release. So we uh, basically did some debug stuff. Um, the main uh, things that were worked on at this place were the macOS integration stuff, which means that uh, we will have a macOS release uh, mm -hmm. from now on. And um, we already uh, have a .app 
files that people can use. It's not signed because that costs money and that's not very easy to do. And Apple does not make it easy on open source projects by like, it doesn't make it easy at all. It's a very unfriendly platform to develop at for. <clears throat> so uh, we will uh, have this uh, dot app uh, thing that people can try out. And is that and available uh, on the website now, Mark? Hmm? Is that available yeah. on the website now? Uh, soon. As soon, soon as I figure things out with uh, okay. with Martin just after this meeting. <laughs> yep. Excellent. Um, <clears throat> So uh, the it's big a, change is that the requirement that anyone that's working on the Mac build has to wear a black turtleneck, black turtleneck and blue jeans. <laughs> Are isn't, there that the, <laughs> isn't that a requirement for building for Mac? They already have <laughs> enough of restrictions, I think. Maybe we don't need to impose any more. <laughs> okay, all right. No black turtlenecks and blue jeans. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. Yeah, so the, the big thing that will change uh, from the, the experience that Mac users did have with Inkscape is that they will not have to install XQuart and it will look much more natural. Well, we will use the uh, strange Apple keys that they use instead of control all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, we will have the menu bar at the top like uh, normal uh, Mac OS uh, applications. So they will feel like it's an app for Mac, even if it's just uh, integration stuff, based on, but uh, like everyone else, basically. So Mark, this... uh, well, Mark yeah. can you tell us how that came about? I know people were concerned about the app. I think it was the 924 Maybe? build or 923. One of those kind of fell off of the. Basically, we had uh, yeah, we uh, basically for some years, like maybe five years, we didn't have uh, any macOS developer for in Inkscape. We, did, we didn't have a lot of developers, but none of them was really uh, building and uh, packaging for uh, I, I think one of them was using a Mac, and uh, none of them knew how to package things for Mac. So obviously, we didn't have it, uh, anyone to do it, so it was not done. That's how it works in the open source world. If, there is no one to do it. It's not done. That's it. And uh, yeah, we, we we did have some weird way to package it with X squat and stuff for older releases. But um, basically, the only feedback we did have from macOS users is it's bad. So if the only feedback you get from one platform is negative, then that doesn't really encourage you to improve it for these basically people who only complain. So we did not make uh, an excessive effort to get it for Mac because I did. I won't buy a Mac just to build on Mac. It's just stupid. I, I just won't do it. So um, no. Recently, we had two people uh, using a Mac and knowing how to code on a Mac and knowing how to package on a Mac that came on the team. It's uh, Rene de Hessel and Thomas Holder. And um, Rene de Hessel, in particular, did uh, fantastic work in uh, packaging and uh, no. Uh, it came to this uh, the current state. So it's it's enough if you have some some uh, uh, skills and you think these skills are needed in the open source world, then don't wait and just go and contribute. Because yeah. if you don't, then nobody will, basically. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that um, it, when we were when we were having trouble recruiting, because we did actually deliberately go out and try and recruit. Um, we recognized that we didn't actually have very good spaces for uh, Mac developers to exist in. Uh, we didn't have specific chat rooms for them, no specific mailing lists. And so I can quite easily see why. We had a developer who came quite quite a few years ago and tried to contribute to the pro project as a Mac release per person. And from their perspective, we, we turned them away, right? We didn't engage with them. We didn't respond to their messages. And so they went off and they did their own thing. And I feel like now we're as a pro project we're in a much better space where we acknowledge the fact that Mac developers need need their own space. They they have their own chat room now, and they have their own uh, build processes, and they they they're able to have the freedom I think to make the decisions that you need in order to specialize Inkscape for a specific pl platform. Uh, is that an IRC chat room or is that on our our, our, our chat server? It's on it's the on chat. chat. It's on the chat. Okay, I guess I'm just not seeing it. Oh, we, we specifically excluded you. 
Um, well, that's probably a good idea, <laughs> considering how I feel about that. <laughs> yeah. we were, that whole stuff about forgiving people, we just want to give you practice. Oh, that, that's fine. <laughs> um, actually, no, I, it, it, it is in there. Um, if somebody is, so the way the chat works, just so um, kind of address that concern. Um, if you haven't logged in, you'll be greeted with a, kind of a welcome page and you can find the channels there. But um, if you are logged in, I think you have to go up into one of the buttons up in the top left. Okay. And uh, you can see some of the other channels. There, there are quite a few. But... I was also just wondering how, uh, how visible it is because um, if we want to get more people involved with uh, the Mac builds, then um, one possible way to do that is to make it more more visible or uh, I could post a link to the uh, the chat room uh, directly off of this podcast if you'd like to. But then again, if you want to keep it kind of private for now, that's all right. Just let me know what you want to do. It's yeah, it's not private um, deliberately. OK, I, I yeah. was only joking about that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's also I feel like it, it should be in the hands of the people who use the room. So no, I don't believe any of us are, are really in a position to say. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll ask But them if you're hearing this and you have taught skills there, we'll post a link to that channel. You can introduce yourself. And um, I'm sure like everything on this project, um, we can always use help. Yeah. Even if it's always. just documentation, you know. Um, I, oh, testing. Just People documentation, I mean. We, 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 we kind of need a, a lot of Mac testers. People know how to do things in the future. We, we, and we, Mac we... testers would be good too. We will need a lot of testers for the Mac build because it might have problems that the packagers need to be aware of. Mm -hmm. um, and, and can we, uh, Mark, can you point out to people, you've been doing a migration to GitLab, can you speak briefly to how somebody that's testing um, the Mac build might be able to file to a bug? But how to test it? Or uh, what, what do you look for in a bug report? I know we have an article about this, but this is another thing that I just assume everyone knows. And I discover most people don't file bug reports in their day-to-day -day lives. Really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so should I just demonstrate how to test the latest Mac or things or? Um, I, maybe in another? Yeah, maybe in another one. But what are some things that are helpful when somebody's reporting a bug that they um, find? What should they know? Well, it includes the exact steps uh, how to reproduce it. Make sure it's an actual bug. And uh, always includes the exact version which you, whatever, that you're testing. That's basically the three very important things. The version and exact steps for others to reproduce the bug. Not uh, I do stuff and then it crashes. It's just a useless report. Like I cannot extract any information of it crashes after some time. Uh, we also have if you tell me uh, when I click here, then here, then see here, then make a, a, a rectangle and press Control Z, then it crashes. Then that's useful because I can do the exact same thing and check that it actually crashes, and then I can fix it. Uh, we also have a short animated video <laughs> on how to. Uh, oh, report. Yeah. do you remember? I was, yeah. No, I didn't remember. I was actually um, hoping. I hope that so. It, it took me I was kind of baiting, <laughs> baiting Tim to lead us into that whole. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was I was waiting for a gap in the conversation to sort of say, Chris, you did. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> you did this amazing video that teaches people Speaking how to. Uh, oh, you so can, uh, you can always. Count on my shameless self promotion. In <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't know anything about Mac, but would the bug process for Mac be the same as it would be for Windows and Linux, or is it yeah, completely? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if if we point people in the show notes to the link for the video that you did, Chris, and yeah. and then we can promote that, and then people that do want to come on and do the bug reporting for the Mac build. They've got all the tools they need then at their disposal. Well, I think the URL is just inkscape.org slash report. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I would just point out as a non-developer who occasionally dabbles in technical troubleshooting, the, the biggest key is just helping somebody else figure out how to do this, create the same problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. If they can't, then they can't fix it as much as they'd like to. 
Yeah. Yeah. And if, if you've got any doubts about bug reporting, just report the bug, leave your email. And if people need to get in touch with you, they will. They'll get in touch with you. I've done it myself. I've had emails from the team to say, can you clarify this? Can you clarify? Have you tried this? And you just open a dialogue. And the important thing to realize is you are communicating with a human being on the other end. You know, the developer, they're a person. They, they want it to succeed the same as you do. So they're not there to sort of bite your head off or anything like that. Um, and that's really what this podcast is all about, to introduce the team to you, the users, and let you see that they're actually real people. And they're not just a corporation hid away behind a name. So, yeah, if in if no. doubt, do the bug report. You know, you can't really do it wrong. The, the fact that you're yeah. offering information is the important thing. Yeah, that's a great well, way we to do have a, We have a fun opportunity right now to get some practice, right? That's right, with the bug migration game. Was that Ooh. the second you <laughs> Come on, Come on, Chris. Take tell us about this. this. Tell us. Is it time for that? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> come us. on. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, so um, we're moving from, um, all of our bug reports from Launchpad to GitLab. Uh, so we've made a little game for you all. Uh, you migrate the bugs and then you get bug points, which equate to a score. So we have like a, a leaderboard set up uh, so you can see uh, who's like at top of the chart. Um, and this is all uh, automated. Uh, you can so uh, check back to see what your uh, what your stats are. And like, uh, I think a one in every four bugs is like a, a special bug. So you get these little bug animation badges next to your name. Uh, and for each one of those, uh, you get a bug sticker at the end of the of the event. So after all the bugs are migrated, then you'll get uh, uh, stickers for your bug collection in the mail. Uh, so you have a little incentive to, uh, or even if you're not top of the charts, you still get a little things for, for playing along and joining in. Um, and uh, the top, I think the top three, we have thoughts for like a grand prizes for the end uh, as well. Uh, things like uh, Inkscape mugs and t-shirts, et cetera. We're still kind of trying to decide what we want to <laughs> have as our our grand prizes but uh yeah um and also um when you reach a certain uh, bug point level uh, you get a um, an achievement badge which will also be a sticker so you'll get some stickers at, at the very least for I, help I, out. I should at least i should at least point out that the stickers that chris makes are incredibly good <laughs> so, are, so yeah. it's worth it's worth doing the bug migration game just so you can get your hands on some of these stickers because they are top notch Oh, thank oh my you. gosh, thank you and you much. should see the little animated bugs that Chris created for these different uh, perks. I think those are reward enough. Um, I'll patch awesome. them in. Yeah, if yeah you, I, I'll, I'll patch a screenshot of them in. Yeah. Oh, I, yes. oh, there you go. Yeah, you can see them. Yeah, you, you have to see these. They're just, they're just awesome. If you click on the uh, the bug field guide, you can kind of see the uh, the larger versions of them. Uh, although I'm not sure how the animation is going to go. Animation is a little bit slow, I guess, but you know. <laughs> well, I, I'm hoping that we migrate from GitLab to something else just so we can do this again. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. Is that good. <laughs> Already looking forward to the next one. Yeah. The, hey, um, but I'm many thanks to, to Chris, and, and you had a partner in crime on this, Chris. Can you tell us about his contribution? Um, yeah. Uh, actually, um, the problem is we know everyone by their pseudonyms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't remember <laughs> what his real name is, um, or if I'm allowed to use it. Or I do have a partner in crime. He's uh, actually the one who did uh, the uh, back end. So like, uh, the automation stuff is all Python uh, that looks at, at GitLab and uh, GitHub uh, on the back end and automatically generates uh, the nice leaderboard and everything. And I really, really couldn't have done it without him. Let me see what. The name that he was using is and yeah we'll, we'll come back to that but thank you yeah. so much and i think it's a good example of just somebody coming having a skill set and a willingness to help and voila we found this really awesome way for them to help so many thanks i think it just goes to show that we don't know each other we're all strangers we're from different places around the world but we come together because of inkscape we work together. We never potentially see each other. 
Um, this is the first time that some of us have actually seen each other face to face. And I think that's that's an amazing thing that people well, this, can work together. But this is not to excuse me not remembering his name. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is my problem, and I'm really embarrassed that I don't. Um, what, do you want to talk about that forgiveness thing again? Yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're not gonna demonstrating this. this. Mind we plan, on, we plan this in advance. <laughs> <laughs> we, that, we love each other we're grateful for each other and um yeah we mix, we mess up each other's dreams sometimes yeah i do um i will get his name and and yeah. information actually let me make sure that i'm okay to use his name in the first place though because yeah. that's another question um but yeah i'll patch it in so um will you also post a link to the um bug migration game yes I for will. anybody yeah. that wants to see um yeah. how to get involved Yep, it's and come join us. Um, there are only 13 uh, bug trackers or uh, bug uh, migrators right now. So um, really, it's early days. Uh, a couple of people are really owning it currently, but <laughs> uh, there are lots and lots of bugs to migrate. So um, that's not to say that somebody who is really uh, dedicated couldn't catch up at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, for, um, 8% uh, migrated, at the, and it's been mm -hmm. a month. So. And plus, you 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 don't need uh, you don't need to win in order to get the stickers nope. and things. Nope. So. Uh, you well, and, and and we all benefit if you migrate one bug. That's just one yeah. fewer bugs, and a year from now, that's going to be forgotten and stumbled upon again. So, yeah, that's the, true. The built-in the built-in incentive is that we have uh, better software, or at least we have the. Um, pieces in place for better software. We still need people helping fix bugs, but uh, this is an important step. Yeah. I don't know about anybody else, but those bugs with that gosh darn gif that wiggles, it just makes my day. So, you know, if you're having a bad day, I'm sure that if you're migrating bugs and you see those cute little bugs, I don't know, I not know. much better than that. We need to have a bug squashing t-shirt series. <laughs> a t-shirt series would be a great If only idea. we had a merch store well, that we could sell such things at. If you're on that, or on that note, I was actually uh, playing around with the idea because people seem to like the bug illustration so much. Oh, they're all made in Inkscape, by the way. I, did, or I have to shameless pitch there. <laughs> <laughs> um, none of that would have been possible without Inkscape. So. Thank you, developers, and and everybody in the project for uh, Absolutely. making such amazing illustration software where I can throw these things together. Um, but I was actually thinking of, of doing uh, a mug uh, with a wraparound mug designer with all the little bugs, kind of around it, uh, with Inkscape bug migration on. You know, so at the very least, you'll probably be able to either win or buy a mug <laughs> of it if you really like the uh, the bug designs, um, which is nice because um, I mean. To collect all 20 bugs is it, it's quite uh <laughs> i don't know how likely it is actually so um uh, but uh this is a one way where you can actually get uh, the whole collection of illustrations uh, without having to actually find all the bugs as well so right. and we that know. leads very nicely onto our next topic which yeah. is we've got merch and i believe chris oh, you've yeah, been right. you've been heavily involved in in setting up the merch stores yeah pfft as as much as as we could um yeah th so well, we've got two of them right now one is on a company called bread shirts uh, website below also we have a new partner um hello tux who is doing some really really nice embroidered inkscape logo t-shirts and they've been great you know they've uh, put up uh, with all of our uh a nitpicking crap for uh you know how how perfect the logo has to be and uh and how visible it is. so you know, um, kudos to them for working with us in the first place. <laughs> they specialize in in uh, a helping open source project. So that's all they have on their website. So they're well worth buying from just for that reason. Um, not to mention that the quality is amazing. Uh, you'll really you really get what you pay for with them. Um, Spreadshirt's okay, but honestly, the, the Hello Tux stuff is, is is where it's at. And Hello yeah. Tux um, is available in Europe as well as the US. Is that correct? I believe so, yes. Yeah, because I think Spreadshirt was only available in the US, wasn't it? They would ship internationally, but 
there was a bit of a uh, problem. That, uh, that, actually, I think they do have, I think that we didn't, uh, uh, there was some question whether uh, the Canadian store was was the same store that was the UK, <laughs> or uh, right. the one that we set up for the UK. Um, but I'll double check that. Um, and I, I, I think Spreadshirt will ship to anywhere, but I will yeah. also double check that too. Yeah. yeah, I believe they will as well. No, okay. But yeah, it seems to anywhere. Uh, and I would point out, you know, the, the amount that the project gets from these isn't huge, but if you're going to sport a polo, mm -hmm. um, sport one with some taste that has a fantastic logo on it, and uh, and uh, send a few bucks our way through uh, the contributions there. Yeah, yeah. So we're coming to the end of the podcast now, but I just wanted to say that if you run a project out there or uh, a school or anything, you're doing anything with Inkscape and you want to let the world know about it, contact Michelle and she can work with you to uh, create a news article to put onto our website and um, let the world know what you're doing with Inkscape. So you can easily contact Michelle over on our Rocket Chat and um, she'll gladly help you out with that. Tim, is, is, oh. is, it, uh, is it true that we would uh, be interested in also talk, talking to some Inkscape users for the pod podcast? Yes, yeah. that's what I was going to mention. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. He gives us more material. <laughs> <laughs> we can we can definitely use some more of that. So, um, And also, if you have any particular um, ideas for uh, things uh, that you would like uh, to know about the Inkscape project, uh, leave a comment below. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, we'll, we'll have a look at that. Yeah, you've, you've got us. Say, yeah, I, I, I probably have said this too many times, but I can't, I don't feel like I can say it enough. Firstly, thank you. Um, there are so many people that we don't even know your name. You've sent a few bucks via the PayPal donate button on the website. Um, that makes so much of what happens here possible. Um, there are tons of you out there just sharing Inkscape with your friends, um, teaching Inkscape in schools, using Inkscape to create video games, artwork. Um, you know, thank you. <laughs> thank you and thank you for sharing all the awesomeness of um, what a lot of really generous contributors um, have made possible. So thanks to all. Yeah. And if you do yeah. donate, leave a comment because we do look at all the comments and I believe Bryce has created a little script to um, show all the comments. Is that right? I believe that's, right, that's yeah. yeah. From, from, pay, from PayPal, I believe. So like you, you can leave a comment uh, in pay, PayPal and we get lots of thank yous. And um, mm. I believe that the, if the script isn't automatic because there's some degree amount of uh, personal information that some, sometimes creeps in. So the messages are all vetted. Um, but Bryce would know that better, and maybe if we can convince Bryce to come onto the pod podcast, he could yeah, he can explain about that a little bit more. Yeah, but please do know that we do look at all your messages, and your donations are very gratefully received, and it, the money gets put to good use. You know, it you're using Inkscape, you appreciate, you donate, and that money all goes towards Inkscape. Uh, it doesn't go anywhere else. It's all for Inkscape, which is while you're donating it, um, we and really kind, do appreciate and your kind words. Yeah, and your kind words matter too. Yeah. There are a lot of people working behind the scenes, and uh, like Mark, Martin, really anyone here, that um, it, it makes a difference to hear somebody say something positive and express mm -hmm. their gratitude. Yeah, and even if you can't afford to donate, just a a, a nice word, just a, an email or a message, just say hey, thanks a lot. That goes a long way. It can really lift someone when they're feeling a bit low and sat at the computer coding all day and getting depressed, and then it's a message pops spots. up. <laughs> yeah. it, can, it can really lift your day. So, so you know, there's lots of ways that you can give back, and it's not always about money. You know, it's just yeah. sometimes a kind word can go a long way. And you can you can find us online on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and Mastodon. And so and we're, we're out <laughs> And the Facebook group is awesome. 
Just saying. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I, you're not biased at all, are you? I'm not biased. No, no, no. I'm not biased at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I we do. To it. I, or, I, I've been on there a lot lately. I, maybe yeah. more than I should. <laughs> it should be. It's a little bit of an addiction at this point, I would say. Yeah. So, no. well done, Tim, for setting that up. <laughs> it's I'm a really friendly place. For making sure that the De DeviantArt uh, group is men mentioned. So, if you, yeah, you post your, your Inkscape artwork to De DeviantArt, you yeah. can post it to the Inkscape, Ink, Ink, Inkscapers group. And uh, there's also an Inkscape Elite group, which I ha highly recommend just viewing oh. the artwork. It's so, so beautiful. Excellent. Can we add the links to those put down below in the comments? Yep. yep. Excellent. And uh, just to add shamelessly as well, we have an at Inkscape official Instagram account as well now. So we take artwork that people submit to the um, Inkscape.org gallery. And I'm going to include the DeviantArt page as well once I get that link. So we're going to be pulling in artwork from there and showcasing what people can do with Inkscape. And if you've not seen the Instagram account, there is some amazing stuff on there. There really is. It's unbelievable. So go check that out. All right. It's just left for me to say a huge thank you to all of you for taking part today. I really appreciate it. Special thanks, Martin. <laughs> I really appreciate you turning up today. I know you didn't want to, but you did. So huge thanks for that. Um, a huge thank you to everyone for making this possible. And a huge thank you, you to, to everyone out there uh, watching this podcast. Thanks to everyone. And I look forward to seeing you next month. Bye for now. See you. See you. Bye. Bye.